This is the strongest Mechon ever built. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Why are you running? Hey guys, JB Sphere Freak here, back for another Ultimate video. And today, I'm going to be starting my new series for Xenoblade Chronicles, which is my super boss guide. And today, we'll be looking at Ancient Daydella. Before we jump in though, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to let me know that this video helped you and that you're enjoying this content. Also, spoiler warning for the seventh party member of Xenoblade Chronicles. You have been warned. Ancient Daydella is one of the five super bosses within Xenoblade Chronicles, sitting at level 105. Therefore, he's always going to have a red portrait regardless of your level. He has over 420,000 hit points, over 2,000 attack and ether respectively, and 80 points of agility as his base stats. With his buffs for being a higher level however, his agility works at around 200. He also possesses a range type spike of 10 meters which deals 1260 damage every couple of seconds. He is a sight based monster with 360 degree division at 60 meters range, meaning you'll be detected even if you come up from behind. Battle start affinity is still possible though as long as you initiate the battle as soon as possible. He possesses 6 different arts, 5 of which are physical and 1 of which which is ether. He is able to inflict bleed, topple and max HP down as debuffs via his art and also has a level 10 talent art requiring a level 10 Monado shield to block it. He will always initiate the fight using his only ether art laser from a distance as you approach him. This should provide you with a vision if it would be a one hit kill or close to. At 30% HP he will activate his crazed aura which makes him deal more damage and grants him haste. Remember that the enemy is a mechon so normal weapons don't deal any damage to the mechon unless he is toppled or the party uses anti mechon weapons. Daedella has very high resistance to all debuffs and can only be afflicted with break during a chain attack and can then be toppled afterwards. Like all the other super bosses, he cannot be dazed though. During his crazed aura, he becomes immune to being toppled, which is when spamming arts is recommended. As a reward for beating this beast, you can obtain level 5 heat sink and night vision cylinders, the former of which is exclusive to this boss. In terms of party members, I recommend using Shulk and Fiora simply for the fact that they can deal normal damage to Mechon. For the final member, I'd either use Dumban, Rhine, or Melian, depending on the strategy you decide to use. For the purposes of this video, I will be using Dunban, as he can easily and quickly topple, has high agility, and can easily build up the party gauge. Make sure to put spike defense gems on each character to reduce the damage his spike deals. Using one spike defense 6 gem reduces the damage by 75% resulting in only 315 damage being dealt instead of the full 1260. Dunban's steel protection skill also further reduces the spike damage by 20% totalling at 63 damage instead. Quick mess. Agility up gems are also essential to make sure you can actually hit the boss. Aim for 200 agility on each one of your party members to make sure you can reliably hit him. Topple up gems are also very useful to use as they will extend the duration of your topples from 3 to 6 seconds, meaning you can keep him on the ground for longer preventing him from doing anything. I also recommend an initial tension gem on Fiora to acquire as much tension as possible to get her final cross available as soon as possible to keep forcing topple. Other than that, use whatever combination of gems you feel works best for you, but for reference, my gem setup is in the background. In terms of skill links, make sure that Fiora has the critical drain skill so that every one of your party members can then regain their own HP to offset any damage you might take. Skills that boost chain attacks, such as ultimate teamwork and chain of friendship, also really help to deal large amounts of damage and make the most out of each chain attack. Make sure you are using as many topple arts as possible to keep Daydella grounded for as long as possible. Any arts that also give party gauge, such as Dunban's Soaring Tempest, also work really well, 
to help keep the party gauge up, allowing you to chain attack after chain attack. As mentioned earlier, you can't daze the boss, however Mag Storm gives the bonus effect on Mechon anyway, so swapping cross impact is also very useful to build that party gauge. Finally, any art with bonus effects come in very handy, such as Spearblade on Fiora, Slit Edge on Shulk and Worldly Slash on Dunban. So the general strategy for Day Della is topple locking him over and over again. This is why I suggest using the party members previously listed. Playing as Shulk also allows you to get an early Monado armor when the initial laser arc comes out, allowing you to sustain yourself at the beginning of the fight whilst you build that initial chain attack. Shulk's Slit Edge, Backslash and Air Slash are great for then building up the party gauge. Try to stay at the side of Daedella as much as possible to avoid his area of effect arts. Try to prioritise using arts that give bonus effects such as using Air Slash instead of Stream Edge for the break in a chain attack if you are at the side of him. Try to use your talent arts to your advantage as well such as using Cyclone to extend the topple duration a little bit more or Buster for a big chunk of damage. Providing you have spiked defence gems, you shouldn't need to use Monado Purge to prevent his spike damage, as he doesn't have a topple spike and it shouldn't deal much damage in the first place. Monado Purge can remove his crazed aura however. Art spamming usually tends to get the job done for me though at that stage of the fight. If you are struggling though, try to use a few more armors as the 15 seconds of reduced damage with a good supply of healing can practically make you invincible. So to start off the fight, get Battle Start Affinity and approach Daedella and use armour to smash the vision. This usually gives everyone very high tension as well. Your other party members will usually take the aggro shortly afterwards and it lets them tank the initial hit. Shortly after, you should have your first chain attack. Inflict Break and Topple and then use whatever arts you prefer. If you choose to use Melia here, she is both a blessing and a curse. She can do huge amounts of damage with her ether talent arts, but you might find it difficult to get the topple every time because you have to use spear break first. After the chain attack, build the party gauge as quickly as possible. From my experience, you should have another chain attack ready to go by the time he begins to stand up again. And that's generally it. Chain attack, break, top up, damage. Save your talent arts though for chain attacks as time doesn't move meaning you won't miss a cyclone as the break runs out. Overall though, this super boss isn't that difficult. In the gameplay, I did this whole fight without an anti-mechon weapon on Dunban. From my experience, I've been able to consistently beat this boss and defeat him with a full party using non-mechon weapons. Any player should be able to beat this boss the moment they reach level 99 with this build. And on that, I give Ancient Daedella a 2 out of 5 on my difficult slider. Anyway, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my future super boss guides to help you get that 100% completion. If you have any further suggestions of what you would like me to include in these videos or any ideas leave them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to implement them into my future videos. Finally, make sure to check out my previous video for 8 things you might not know about Xenoblade Chronicles. Thanks for watching.